Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project and my quest to own and operate the perfect Jeep. We're going to have to go ahead and do something about this punched in door. Look at that. That's an awful dent right there. And not only that, we got some big damage that's hidden behind this cladding. So uh, we're not going to mess with any body work. No, no, no. We're just going to go ahead and swap out this door entirely. Here it is guys, here is our junkyard door score. This is gonna be our replacement door. Now if you look closely, you'll notice that there's three issues right here. One, we have Laredo cladding. We're gonna have to swap this off with, uh, with my limited cladding that is painted. The second issue is the door handle. Again, this is the plastic door handle. We need one that is painted. And the third issue is this ugly pinstripe. This, I believe, is painted on, and we're going to have to go ahead and get that that pinstripe removal tool, maybe uh, or grind that off, but this is the least of my worries. First thing we got to do is go ahead and take off all the parts we want from our old door. So before I remove this door from the vehicle, I'm just going to strip it while it's still on it. I figure that it's going to be much easier to uh, move this window up and down while it's still connected to power. So I'm gonna want the window, definitely gonna save this door panel because it's limited and it matches. Also the speaker is working. So I'll take out the speaker and uh, yeah, let's get this cracking. Let's start removing stuff. All right, we're gonna kick this off by removing the door card and to do that, you take out this T25 Torx. Hard to see in the dark, but yep, that's in there. And also we got a little Phillips head hiding in this little door holder thing. Uh, yeah, so we'll go ahead and take this out. Now we can use our trim removal tool and we can pop off this door card. Alright, let's remove this lock lever, door lever attachments. You just kind of push these little things to the side. This comes up. Now we can unplug our window switch. There we go. If you get behind your window switch with a little flat head screwdriver, you could go ahead and work out the switch. There we go. I'm just gonna plug this back in here so we can manipulate the window as we need it. There we go. All right, speaker's coming out. Three Phillips heads and one clip. Ta-da! Let's peel back this moisture barrier. Ugh. Watch out for the butyl. It sticks to everything. Especially hands. Especially clean hands that have just been washed. Oh, this thing is crumbling. Terrible. Oh, it's crumbling so bad. Might have to use my shower curtain trick to replace this. There we go, and plenty left over for another door. Hey, check it out guys. The door handle bolts are super easy access. Wide open in here, and right through this hole here, we can go ahead and pop this handle off right away. All right, let's detach this lever right here. Ow, that's tight. All right, let's go ahead and detach this lever right here. All right. Let's detach this lever right here. Ah! Woo! <laughs> gotcha. There she is. Sweet. Having a magnet on you is a great idea when you're working on doors. So you always drop stuff down here. This is a good way to fish it back out. All right. Now, I'm thinking I might keep this door in the backyard so I could pull parts from it. But uh, if you're going to chuck it, one good thing to keep with you is this piece of trim. This trim rots easily. You want to be very careful when you remove it. You don't want to scratch your paint job. Very gently get up in here. 
You want to pry from the middle because if you pry from the ends, you could bend this. So it bends easily, you don't want to bend it. There we go. This is breaking free. All right, that's in the keep pile. Might as well pick off some easy trim while I'm at it. I'll go ahead and do the inside. Come on. Everything's difficult, one-handed, but I try my best for you guys. Give you a good camera shot. There we go. Put this in the keep pile. Let's see, if I was gonna do the glass now, this is what I would do. Get your window where it needs to be. This is a little different from the XJ. You gotta pop these little pins out. One. There's another one somewhere on this side. There she is. There we go. Now you can just wiggle this thing out right here. Pop this pin out. That helps you slide the glass up. I'll do that later. Let's get this door on. It's, it's raining. <laughs> Always got to rain on me. Jeez. All right, here we go. Window all the way down. Now I'm going to remove these two 10 millimeter bolts and these four 15 millimeter bolts. And of course, we're going to have to disconnect this. You know what? Let's do this now. There we go. All right, 10 millimeter first. Now we'll do these hinge nuts. These are a 13 millimeter, I was wrong. Go ahead and this way, loosen. All right, there's nothing holding this door on. So, I'm just gonna let this door rest on the shoulder and we can take this off with one person. Easy peasy. There it is, all day long. Easy stuff, guys. All right, before we put our new door on, we're gonna wanna check our boot. Make sure there's no broken wires. I saw some tape in here earlier. This might be suspect, but no, I think it's just factory tape on that wire this seems to be intact so that is good we took off the old connector that was snipped so we'll go ahead and tuck this boot back on and let's see we'll take off these junkyard nuts because we have our own there we go boot is on wires look good Put that back. Excellent. All right, uh, I wanted to open this window so I could put the door back on the same way I took the other one off by resting it on my shoulder, but the rain's picking up. I think I'm just gonna muscle this in out of pure necessity. So uh, wish me luck. Nope. Don't close. <laughs> it's not ready. All right. Just gonna put this rubber boot on the connector from this side. Plug in my new door. Push this baby in. There we go. I'm gonna get all four nuts back on this. All right, I'm gonna go check to see if the speaker works and... Oh, hey, there we go. We know the window works. Speaker works! All right, I know this door was square on a WJ body. Not this WJ, but 
another WJ nonetheless. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to match these little brackets up to this old paint line as I tighten them and hopefully this thing will just be perfect. So let's cross our fingers. I'm gonna do that now. It is still raining. All right, let's see if she shuts. Hey, look at that. Pretty good. All right, I'm done for today. See you guys in the morning. guys welcome back the sun is out it rained hard last night you know what i was hoping that the rain would wash away a lot more of this grime than it did but hey that's what windex is for so all right let's go ahead and we'll change out this ugly laredo door handle we'll put in that nice painted limited one Hey, check this out, guys. I just removed the speaker from the Laredo door, and look, this was the Laredo door speaker, and this was the limited one. This was the Infinity sound system. This magnet is much more powerful, so I'm going to go ahead and put this one in. I wasn't going to, but I'm glad I checked. Now I won't jip myself good tunes. Go ahead and plug in that speaker. Wow. I thought I set off the alarm of this Jeep by plugging in the speaker. Oh, the neighbors. You got me, neighbors. Good one. Cheat my life. All right, I was reaching in there trying to reattach that rod. It's hard to see, but if you need help, if you open the door handle a little bit, it brings that little joint back down. So you're able to put that rod in easier. Then you go ahead and you, you clip that little white plastic tab back down onto it. So that's it guys, door is hooked up. Now I'm covered in butyl. And uh, this is just a shame. I'm just going to leave this on. If I take this off, it's going to crumble. So whatever. I'll use this disgusting thing. And hopefully it won't leak. There's enough of this goo on it. But I think it'll be all right. All right, now I'm just going to put back my limited door card. And that'll be it for the interior. All right, guys. When you put on your door cards, you're going to want to check all these little fasteners in here to make sure they're not busted like these are now there's a good chance they may all be busted between the two of them and you won't be able to have a complete set so i went online and i found these on amazon i'll leave a link in the description below i think i had a bag of 20 for maybe like six bucks i'm not sure but i'll leave that link and this way you can replace all the busted ones go ahead and slide in a brand new clip like so and this is important because this is what really holds your door card on. The interior panel only has two screws. One there, one up there. The rest is all these clips. So go ahead and get some new clips in there. And trust me, you will be very happy. All right, door panel's going on. But I had to get my switch back from that old door. So when you put the switch back in, this bumpy side goes on the bottom. Flat side goes on the top. So I'm just going to snap it in just like that. Easy peasy. Then we're gonna go ahead and plug this back in. All right, gonna try to do this one hand for you so I can show you as best as possible. Got our switch plugged in here. Now we're gonna go ahead and do our door handle and door locks. So we're gonna go and make sure that these wires, these cords aren't tangled. 
and then I'm gonna drop them in place. So obviously the one that sticks out further goes on the bottom. Oh God, this is hard to do one-handed. <laughs> if you guys haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button right now. There we go, I think that's in. Nope, missed it. There we go. Now it's in. Rotate these closed. Sorry guys, it's the best I could do. I'm struggling up here. All right, I'll double check that they're not tangled up. There we go, one more time. Line this up. Pop that in the hole. In, rotate. There it is, that's how you do it. Whew, all right. Now I'm gonna take a breath and line up all these little holes with all these little yellow fasteners we just installed. Now don't send it home until they're all aligned. You don't want to break one of these things off. But once you know they're all in place, there we go. Now she's on. Yeah, baby. And if this little piece of trim folds in, let's go ahead and lift it up, run your finger along, boink, trim pops right back out. And there, that's beautiful. All right, let's get these screws in. There we go, guys. Hit this baby with a little bit of Windex, an armor roll wipe, and she is good to go. Oh, and check this out. This is score right here. This door has no rust underneath it, which is basically the main reason why I chose this door, besides that it had no dents in it. And it was color matching, <laughs> but it also had no rust. So inside is done. Now let's address the outside. Cladding. Back to the original door with the original cladding. You can see the damage over here. Now there is a big gap. I could stick my whole hand in here. Um, that's from the damage being pushed in. So let's go see, we'll experiment with this. I think this just peels off. Cladding off. All right, here's the damage. No big deal, just a chunk or two. That's nothing to write home about. I wouldn't have even cared, honestly, but since I found the new door, check this out, guys. Boom, <laughs> look at that. My homeboy, Roy Remick, strikes again. He scored me a beautiful new piece of cladding. And I also got the trim piece that goes to the body. And we're gonna go ahead and use this instead. So uh, go follow Roy Remick on Facebook and hit him up. He will find you parts. <laughs> he always comes in clutch. Thanks, Roy. All right, let's see. Let me find a place where I can work my fingers into. Don't want to use tools, because if you use tools, you can scratch your paint, and scratches lead to rust, which leads to rot, which leads to you need a new door. So I'm not doing that again. There we go. Free Laredo cladding, hit me up. Now we're gonna need some double-sided tape to go ahead and stick the molding back on right down here, but of course, we got this old tape in the way. Now we could spend hours trying to pick this off with our thumbnail, but you and I both know that's miserable. So check out what I got. I got a 3M pinstripe removal. It's supposed to take off goo and grime and pinstripes. We'll see if that works. I got it mounted on the drill already. We're gonna run this along this old double-sided tape and we're gonna do this top tape line where that ugly rain guard was, the shattered rain guard. I think I wanna replace that though, but I'll put new ones on later. But then we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna try to take off this pinstripe. Now I think this is painted on, we'll see. It's pretty crusty. I tried to pick it off and it's coming off, so maybe this will do the trick. All right, let's get it. Wow. I think this thing saved me hours of my life. 
if you guys ever peeled molding tape before, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. That's a nightmare. <laughs> oh, look at that. I am impressed. Didn't even jack up the paint. Wow. I'm impressed. Good job, 3M. All right, let's tackle the old pinstripe. All right, guys, there it is. Pinstripe is off. I see a little bit of remnants of it, but I think that's embedded in the clear coat. Not much you can do about that. We'll, uh, we'll wet sand that down later. We'll do that in the paint correction video. <laughs> WJ's first car wash. Here we go. Time to put on the adhesive. This is 3M. This is the good stuff. First time I saw this stuff used, Chip Foose used this to attach the molding on a 67 Mustang Fastback, the old Eleanor replica. And I fell in love with the tape. Oh, there you go. Burn Mustang. Now, you guys know I love Mustangs. So, there we go. 3M. Magical stuff. And I went ahead and I wiped this good with uh, the old rubbing alcohol. Hey, check this out, guys. I used that wheel, the erase wheel on this, and man, it burned through the rubber real easy, or whatever plastic this is. So be careful, don't want to burn through it. But uh, yeah, I went ahead and I did that off camera because I used this thing like a beast so far. So there we go, I'll lay this across. Nice and even in the old spot. Press it down. There we go. And we'll give it a little snip here at the end. There we go. Gonna save this back in its plastic. Keep it nice. There we go. Just like that. I'm gonna leave this hang down. Now watch this, guys. Gonna give our mating surface one quick wipe down. Put some more rubbing alcohol. Look at that. All that gunk off. All right, here we go. We're gonna keep this piece hanging down. We're gonna press this on. One, two, three, four, five. One through five. Good. Now we're gonna press this bottom piece on. Get ready. Move the tape. Boom. Oh yeah. Excellent. Hey, hey, hey. There we have it, guys. Nice door. Looking good. Looking real good. No, the more I look at it, the more I notice some more imperfections. Kind of like this thing over here, but I am satisfied. Nah, I'll just put the old one back on. <laughs> Psych. All right, only one thing left to do. This piece. Let me jack up this thing, get this tire out of the way. All right, got the wheel out of here. We've got some room to work. Let's see what's behind damage number one. Hmm. Oh, well, this is a pretty bad dent. If I was a body guy, I'd go ahead and pull this out with a slide hammer, but I'm not. So I think we'll just go ahead and put this piece right back over it. There we go. Problem solved. All right. Wow. That is one hell of a shortcut. <laughs> Let's see if these holes line up. Oh, the middle one might be a problem. <laughs> there, cheated a little bit. There it is, guys. She's on. Nice little ripple. That's the only sign of damage. Only remaining evidence. Let's see how she closes. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. 
Hey guys, we got a window that works. We got speakers that work. We got a nice limited door handle on here. Look at this. We got beautiful new cladding that covers up some damage. We got this new cladding to replace the Laredo cladding that came with this door. Huge thank you to Roy Remick for finding me these parts. He's got a great knack for finding parts that you didn't think you could find. He's got great access to junkyards out there in Virginia. So hit him up and uh, maybe he'll get you some parts. So yeah, this door is looking really good. We got rid of that factory or not factory. We got the junkyard writing on here. We got the grime out of there. So it's looking really good. Still a couple little dents in here, little things, but no biggie. We got rid of that big punch mark, which that's huge. I'm very happy with it. This is great. So if you guys are doing your own door swap, make sure that you keep your speakers because if you have infinity speakers, you're not going to want to replace it with the base model speaker as well. If you find a door that has a better sound system, then obviously use that. But you want to look at your parts, make sure you know what you're swapping in, swapping out. One of the biggest things to remember is to keep your module for your passenger side door locks, the lock unlock window button, passenger door, that's what keeps the memory to the key fob. So do not swap out yours, you will lose your function. Keep the one you had. Same thing goes for the wiring. If you swap out the wire harnesses, make sure you keep your wires that have the ability to operate the heated and power mirrors, guys. You don't want to lose that. So uh, that's about it, guys. Really appreciate you watching. This WJ is coming along very nicely. I'm really happy with it. Man, I love that door. It looks like it belongs on here. Well, it does now. So that's it, guys. I will leave a link in the description below to all the products, those Christmas tree fasteners, the 3M pinstripe removal tool, and also the 3M tape to replace your cladding, all that stuff in the description. And I really appreciate it if you click those links to buy those products because Amazon gives me a little kickback and it supports the channel. So again, guys, thank you so much. Remember to like, subscribe, and I will see you on the next project. Peace.